So I have had a lot of student questions about how to utilize Microsoft PowerPoint to develop the uh, first and second figures for the ABT 120 final lab report. Um, so to help everybody out, I've created this tutorial video that will walk through the steps of making a figure in PowerPoint and then pasting it directly into Microsoft Word. I'm using a MacBook Pro and a Mac OS um, Microsoft Office Suite, but the functions should be very similar between Mac and a PC. So here is a representative uh, figure for uh, figure one for the final lab report. And if we were to break this down into individual pieces, we're going to uh, make lines with arrows at the end of them, rectangles, uh, and some different text boxes, but there's about 20 different individual pieces that we're going to need to make in um, PowerPoint that we then move into Microsoft Word. So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to open up Microsoft PowerPoint. So when I open up PowerPoint, it has a widescreen landscape um, sheet and we need to change this so this image is reflective of what the Microsoft Word page actually looks like because any formatting and any shape orientation we do uh, in a landscape image like this if we were to copy and paste it into a uh, portrait image like how the pages are on Microsoft Word it'll mess up all the formatting and cause cause weird things to happen with our images so um, and I don't know if we can see this up on top, but I'm going to go to the File tab. I'm going to go to Page Setup. And I'm going to click on what should be letter paper, so 8.5 by 11 inch. This is normal paper. And I'm going to put on Slides to show a portrait. I'll scale up. I don't think this really matters. So now we have an image uh, or a page that's going to be representative of what our Microsoft Word page looks like. I'm going to delete these different text boxes. Okay, so now to make our figures. We're going to go to Shapes, click on Shapes, and then there should be a lot of different options to use. Let's make our genomic DNA first. I'm going to click on um, the line with two arrows and draw this out. Let me zoom in a little bit to help. So um, there's a couple different issues here. So the default computer, at least, or the default color, at least on mine, is blue. So we'll click on it. We'll right click, which should open up. There we go. Um, our uh, options. We're going to go down to Format Shape and click on Format Shape. That'll bring us up a different window. And again, it may look different on your computer. We want solid line. Here the color is blue, so we'll change this to black. And we can also play with the width. Because I have old eyes, I like to increase the width of these lines, and you can see it getting thicker on the screen. Three seems fine, although uh, any color will be fine. Okay, so then we can click out of here. We have a black line and it's thick. Great. Uh, we're going to be using two different um, loci, the ALU plus and the ALU minus. So we can take this line, I'm going to use a keyboard hot link to copy, and then I'm going to paste it. Then we have these two. So let's go back to our representative image. So now we've created the um, genomic DNA line. We still need to add our um, ALU locus and our text um, keys, our primers, and our amplicon sizes. So we will start with some of the text. This is easy because all you have to do is really uh, quickly double click on anywhere on the uh, PowerPoint screen and it will give you a text box. Let's call the top one ALU plus. Let's call the bottom one ALU minus. Let's orient these in line with our lines. Then, for the ALU Plus, we need to include that ALU transposon, which is always in these PCR schematics shown as a rectangle. So we're going to go to our shapes, we're going to go to square. Click on square. Then this will allow us to click in one corner and drag for a rectangle. So here we have a rectangle. 
In this case, it's blue. We can right click on it, go to format shape again, and uh, get into the same different options we had before. We could change this to any color. Um, I'll do maybe, that's sorry, the line, solid line. So now we're gonna go to fill. I like to have the line and the fill consistent. So now we have both the line in this light blue and the rectangle fill in this light blue, but you could really select any color you'd like. I'm gonna click enter, I'm gonna exit out of there. Also with our rectangles in um, Microsoft PowerPoint, uh, they have an automatic text um, function in the middle. So if you type in ALU, it should automatically come up as ALU. Uh, there is our transposon then in the middle of our ALU plus image. Let's look at our model again. So we've made our genomic DNA and our ALU uh, transposon. Now we're going to add our primers. So to do this, you can simply go to our arrow with a single arrow point, like so. And we can keep these blue since we want to separate them visually from our genomic DNA. Um, I like this length and I like everything to be consistent, so I'm actually going to copy and paste. I'm going to click this down, great, copy, paste. Oops, I'm actually going to get rid of all those, paste, paste. Okay, so I've made four of the same line. I'm going to move this here to the top, and I'm going to move this here to the bottom. So our forward primers are always reading in the three prime to five prime orientation. I'm sorry, the five prime to three prime orientation. We need these reverse primers on the bottom part of our DNA to actually be going from right to left to reflect the double-stranded nature of DNA. So I'm going to zoom in here. And with this, we should be able to actually click on one side and drag it over. I'm going to click on this side and drag it over. So now we have our primers moving in the correct orientation. I'm going to make sure that these arrows are all about the same distance away from our genomic DNA since it's nice to be consistent. Then utilizing the keys to make a text, do forward, forward, reverse, So here is about 75% of the figure that, or figure one for our final lab report. I'm not going to um, include the red amplicon. I'm not going to include the red amplicon numbers or any of these digits in this tutorial uh, because it's simply repeating the steps that we've already accomplished. Um, so I'll move forward. So now what we end up having, let's kind of click and drag, select here. So what we end up having is about 10 different separate um, I, uh, image items. So the next step is going to be to group these together. So instead of dealing with 10 separate images, we're going to have one big image. So select everything and then go to the edge of one of your images. You can't go to white space, it won't work. So go to the edge of the image. You'll see here that my pointer has changed to four different arrows and a little triangle. I'm going to right click, and then we see some different options. In this case, we have group. Click and select group. Selecting group then combines all of these images into one image file. So now we can move, and it references all the individual internal images together. At this point, and again, this is a model image. It's not formatted, not, you know, our, our letters aren't even, our spaces aren't even. But um, once you have completed your finalized figure in PowerPoint, group it all like this and simply copy it. Then open up your final lab report draft. And here's a representative Word document with just a bunch of random words from a previous homework assignment. So now we want to paste this image into our lab report. There's a couple different important considerations for this. So let's say that I want to just paste it in right here. Maybe this section is my results, 
and it would be logical that the results section should be physically associated with the image and figure that it's referencing. I'm simply going to paste it in. So what we see here is this image has been pasted on top of my text, which is not very helpful. So the next step is going to be to select our image, our figure, which is right here, right click on it again, and then go to the option wrap text. Through wrap text you get a lot of different ways that you can integrate an image into the text. So right now you can see there's a check by in front of text, which makes sense because our image is floating on top of or in front of our text. We don't want that. What we can do here is do square, tight, through, or top and bottom. I like top and bottom because it's a lot more clear and differentiates um, the narrative text of whatever section um, is on the page from the figure. So watch what happens to the text when I do top and bottom. And this is neat because now we've um, programmed this image to move the text above and below it. So now we don't have to mess up any of the formatting in our text. We can just put this figure wherever it makes the most sense. Say we'll drop it right here. Notice here that my cursor is on the last space of the text above. It's simply run like this. Here would be a fantastic motion for your figure. You all know I can't spell. Figure one, PCR. schematic, and then you'd have a two to three sentence description. So again, to summarize, we've uh, created a figure in Microsoft PowerPoint, and again, this is incomplete, so please assure that your final figure um, conforms to all of the different guidelines and looks similar to this. Um, but we've created a model figure, we've grouped all of our images together, we pasted them into Microsoft Word, and then we have uh, oriented or wrapped our text around the image so everything flows well and the formatting is appropriate. Good luck!